welcome. We are thrilled to have this special Boss Fight Live edition with Legends of Lucha Libre. I'm Meredith Franks. I run marketing for Boss Fight Studio, and I'm joined by two very special guests this evening. So first up, we have Kevin Kleinrock, who's the president of Mass Republic. And then we also have Eric Aranya, who is a partner and art director at Boss Fight Studio. I thought it would be a really good idea to just start tonight by talking a little bit about Lucha Libre and how it's evolved over the years. So Kevin, maybe you could kind of share some of your insight here. Yeah, for, for the Boss Fight fans who aren't that familiar with Lucha Libre, um, I guess in its simplest, most pure form, uh, Lucha Libre is the Mexican form or version of professional wrestling. Uh, but it, it also has a whole different style and culture to it. Um, the easiest, most recognizable, uh, and most understood difference is many, many luchadors wear masks. Uh, that wasn't the way it started 80 years ago, but it really is what uh, Lucha Libre has evolved into. Uh, the characters are often much more colorful. Part of that is the masks, the capes, and, and the outfits, but um, there's also, uh, I would say, a lot more personality uh, a lot of times in, in Lucha Libre and, and luchadors, um, whether that's just because of the nature of the performance art side of Lucha Libre or whether it's just um, having kind of different, uh, in traditional pro wrestling, you kind of have your heels and your faces, your good guys and your bad guys, and that's where it, it ends. And nowadays you have your men and your women, but even within Lucha Libre, you've got your uh, your Rudos, the bad guys and the Technicos, uh, but then you've got your Exoticos, uh, you've got your Minis, and it, it's kind of a much more uh, in-depth, colorful world. Uh, and also the action. Uh, Lucha Libre, for the most part, is known for its kind of high-flying style, a lot of acrobatics that you don't necessarily see in traditional pro wrestling that much on the main stage. You know, when the Luchadores from Mexico really first got integrated into mainstream pro wrestling in around the, the mid-90s, starting with uh, Psychosis and Juventud Guerrera and Rey Mysterio and ECW, and then those wrestlers and, and Conan going to WCW and uh, the era of Monday Nitro, where the opening match and many other matches throughout the card were usually filled with uh, really great Mexican lucha talent. It really started to open up people's eyes to lucha libre. Uh, and now it's kind of hard sometimes to define, you know, who exactly is a luchador and is it the style you wrestle? Is it that you're Mexican? You know, there's a lot of wrestlers from the United States that will go down to Mexico and become very successful luchadors or elsewhere. Um, Taya Valkyrie, one of our legends of Lucha Libre uh, luchadoras, uh, came from Canada, went to Mexico and became uh, arguably the, the top uh, female wrestler in Mexico for, for quite some time and is currently the uh, AAA Lucha Libre uh, uh, Reina de Reinas champion, the uh, women's champion down there. Um, and so that's kind of the, uh, the, the gist, I guess, of, of what makes Lucha Libre, Lucha Libre. And you know, today you can't really watch any professional wrestling show. It, it, definitely the United States television shows, whether it's Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, Ring of Honor, Major League Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, AEW, without seeing somewhere between two and, and a dozen uh, luchadors. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a really great time to be a wrestling fan because we've got these wrestling companies now that are really um, very diverse in both the talent rosters and the styles. And uh, we are proud at Legends of Lucha Libre to be the, the, the first company, really, to become the kind of players association for Lucha Libre. And uh, you know, we represent stars from all across the Lucha universe, uh, whether they're legends, including some that have passed away, and we work with their, their uh, states, uh, to stars that are part of, like I said, AAA, uh, AEW, Rey Mysterio in, in, in WWE, and so forth. So um, we are league agnostic. It doesn't matter who you are or where you, know, or where you wrestle, you can still be a legend of Lucha Libre luchador, if uh, you've kind of reached that level of your career. And Eric, I know you've been a fan for a really long time. So, you know, could you explain a little bit about how uh, Lucha Libre has evolved for you as a fan over the years and, and what it's meant for you? It, it, so, like Kevin said, uh, in the mid-90s when, when a lot of the Mexican talent came up to ECW and then eventually made their way to WCW, that's when I was 
was really introduced to the concept of, of Lucha Libre. And I fell in love with it. Like that was became my favorite segments of the WCW Nitro and Thunder and all that stuff. And I was a huge Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero and Conan fan and Psychosis and all those guys. But at the you know back in the nineties, it it was hard to find Lucha Libre and, and and consume it and watch it. Like there was it was very difficult. And the, it, and the the best thing that's changed now is because of internet and streaming and uh, all of this. Like, I get to watch, you know, AAA when, you know, because they post almost everything on, on YouTube. Being able to see, like, it, it, I mean, if you go around and you search, you can find wrestling everywhere. There's ways to find all of it and, and watch it now, which there wasn't back, you know, back in the 90s and early 2000s. It, it just wasn't there. Like, it, there was no way to find this unless you had, like, the complete satellite or cable deal and stuff which me and my family we never did so it was it's it's really great now to be able to watch it all and see it all and consume it a lot more than you know a lot more easily and and steadily so i know we talked a little bit about the talent kevin you you touched on some of the talent that lucha libre has now um but you, you also mentioned that you have a lot of past talent as well as current wrestling talent. So how do you balance and make sure that all of those um, luchadores and luchadors are getting um, kind of presence in the marketplace? That's a, good, that's a good question. We kind of look at Legends of Lucha Libre as having three kind of, I guess, um, buckets of talent. Uh, you've got your your icons and your legends, which I guess kind of is a little bit of an overlap. But so within those icons and legends, we have luchadors that are still alive and, and wrestling today. Uh, and then you have, um, unfortunately, luchadors that have passed away, um, especially in a world like Lucha Libre, where a lot of times you don't retire. You literally wrestle until you pass away. And then we've got a, a lot of today's hottest stars, the Penta, Phoenix, Taya, Torres, Laredo Kid, and those types of wrestlers. Uh, and then we also have, uh, I guess really that middle ground is the stars that became super big in the 1990s and then remain uh, topical today. Psychosis, Juventud Guerrera, Conan. Uh, so we've got a really kind of eclectic mix. And I think specifically as it kind of pertains to, you know, boss fight, um, I think you'll, you'll kind of start to see as, as products and, and uh, configurations roll out, we're always trying to keep kind of a, a good mix of, uh, those those kind of three categories, the icons and legends, the 90s stars, and then today's hottest stars, um, you know, as best as we can across the, the, the product line. Awesome. And Eric, maybe you can add some color on how you're balancing all of those in the toy line itself. I know a lot of them have been announced. A lot of the waves have been announced. So how are you dealing with kind of all of these different buckets of stars? Kevin and I early on had a lot of discussion about this and and about kind of balancing the waves the great thing about having those you know the legends and the current and then like that kind of that like 90s star is that that we we kind of get to play in all those time frames and balance the wave like the first wave of premium figures which is you know penta and phoenix is what it is it's penta and phoenix and the the premium waves are only two figures, so it's never going to be quite totally balanced there. But when it comes to like the Fanatico series, we have, you know, you'll, you'll see in the first wave, you know, where we have Penta and Phoenix, but then we also have, we have Taya, and they're all very current, um, a Luchadora, a Luchadors, and then we also have Juventud Guerrero, you know, in his 90s, his very iconic 90s ECW era costumes. And so, like, we get to kind of play around and, and really dive in and do some stuff. Like, the first wave of uh, Mini Mascaras has Solar in it and Super Astro. So we get to go back to the Legends and, you know, the, the Masters and, and play in their sandbox as well and kind of bring it all together as one kind of all-encompassing, like, legends of Lucha Libre line. Like, it's, it's everybody. And I as think... Long, as long as I get that. <laughs> well, and, and I think, too, what's really fun, for me at least, is that because a lot of these stars, uh, the Conans, the Hoovies, have been part of, of Lucha Libre in so many eras, you know, now we're going on three, four decades, there are versions of these characters that have never had 
uh, action figures or collectibles made of them. Like Conan's figure started when he was already unmasked. There had never been a real masked Conan figure. And it was something that I wanted to do for, for many years. And as soon as we, we put together uh, the relationship with, with Boss Fight, you know, that was one of my first things that I, I pitched to Eric and to him, it, you know, it, it made sense. And I think we've seen, hopefully, that uh, you know, the fans have been very excited about getting that version of Conan. And, you know, with, with Hoovy in this wave one uh, fanatic goes again, we're going back to that earliest version of, of Hoovy uh, because that hasn't really existed in a, at least in a, in a proper modern version of a, of an action figure. So it's really great to have this mix and match. And then like, like uh, Eric said, you know, we've also got legitimate legends like Solar and Super Astro who have been wrestling for 45 years. Like that, they have been wrestling every week or or you know uh, i mean astro not so much right now but still makes appearances throughout the year but yeah so you've got you've got talent that uh you know that a grandmother might be really excited to buy for their grandkid because it's the same <laughs> wrestler they grew up watching and now there's finally uh you know official merchandise and action figures and collectibles of these of these stars eric maybe you could talk a little bit about how you approach these toys and, and the scale of these figures and, and how do you make sure that these toys are fun to play with? Well, we have, you know, we, we have a, a number of different lines, um, series coming of, of Legends of Lucha Libre. We have the, um, the premium line and we have the Fanaticos series. And th those are both six inch scale action figures. I say six inch scale because not all the characters are going to be six inches. Hooventude will be a little shorter than that. You know, Vampiro will be quite a bit taller than that. Like we're trying to keep at least within a, um, within some uh, a visual of scale with all of the uh, talent, but um, also, you know, a six inch scale, the, that's not, a scale boss fight usually plays in. We we normally do four inch figures, um, but we wanted Lucha Libre is so bigger than life. When you go and see it, it's it's just crazy and it's it's big and it's it's just it's amazing to watch on that it chose that scale, but we also wanted, you know, we wanted everyone, you know, kids and adults able to put if you want your Penta and your Phoenix to wrestle the rock and stone cold by all means put put them together with your metal figures put them together with your you know your upcoming aew figures and your um and jpw figures like they're all of this stuff can kind of go together now and i think that's amazing for the the wrestling and lucha fans out there is that you can kind of buy all this stuff and put it together on your shelves and and i think it'll be a lot of fun in in that way we didn't want to just do the action figures we wanted to go out there and, and kind of really represent in, in a couple of different ways. So we have like the mini mascaras line, um, which we'll be showing some stuff on later on. And uh, we have like the um, Luchasitos, the mini figures coming up, um, which are these like little cutesy kind of versions of, of the luchadors. And we have some other stuff planned. You know, we have the accessory sets coming out because, you know, accessories and weapons is such a mainstay of, of all, you know, wrestling. And, and Lucha. So, you know, we're, we're really trying to kind of expand outside of just figures as well for this line. And I think it's important to mention, you know, as you said, the, the scale being six inch and all the other lines that are out right now being six inch, that these accessories are going to basically be compatible across lines. So, you know, if your Lucha Brothers figures and you want to stage them having, a, you know, a dog collar chain match against Lucha House Party, You'll be able to do that. I'd pay real money to see that, by the way. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a fun way to play with these toys here. So you guys have talked a lot about the talent, um, and I see lots and lots of comments with different uh, luchadors and luchadores names. Um, so how do you approach the talent, and, and how excited is the talent about toy lines like this and maybe Kevin you can kick us off because you start these discussions and how do those discussions usually go well because I guess let me let me address I guess some of the the overall how Legends of Lucha Libre works because I'm seeing a lot of names in the in the chat room and I think I could help it make sense to some people um so first off the big difference really in the Lucha Libre world especially now um in the modern era the last five years things have really changed uh versus say the WWE 
uh, and even to the, for the most part AEW, except for the Lucha Brothers because of their relationship with us, uh, is that you know, if you're a WWE wrestler, then you, your identity, your IP is completely owned and controlled, uh, at least while you're there, by WWE. And oftentimes, if you're a big enough name and a legend, then when you leave WWE, or even if you're not in WWE, but you were, you get signed to a Legends deal, and they control your IP and your merchandising. Well, the Lucha Libre world has always worked a little bit differently, where most uh, the biggest stars have owned and controlled their own IP. But there was never really a, a program or a company that said, hey, let's work on developing officially licensed merchandise for luchadors so that they can have officially licensed merchandise, not just in Mexico, but outside of Mexico as well. And so that fans have a way to purchase officially licensed merchandise because uh, Lucha Libre in general has always been a very bootleg culture. A lot of that has been in part because there was no official merchandise to purchase. So I think that Lucha Libre has such a, a really great fan base. And you see this, I think, in other um, kind of genres as well, whether it's anime or whatever. If you give the fans officially licensed merchandise, they'll choose that officially licensed merchandise over you know, a bootleg piece of merchandise any day. But those pieces of merchandise just haven't existed. So we started putting together this program, this Legends of Lucha Libre, where it's almost one part talent representation agent and one part going out and developing the products and then you know uh, making deals with companies like Boss Fight. We work with an agency called Firefly Brand Management, and they work with us to secure licensing uh, across different um, different products. They're the ones that put together the Boss Fight deal, and so we look at a number of factors. Uh, the biggest factor that plays into a lot of what uh, you know, people are asking uh, is number one, are they available? Are they not uh, exclusively under contract somewhere? Was their character or persona created by AAA or CMLL? And if that's the case, then they're probably off limits in the first place because that IP is owned by the other company or by other people. Uh, and then outside of that, uh, it really is a matter of, is it somebody that we think is of the level of, of Legends of Lucha Libre? Can we make officially licensed products with them that we think is going to sell? And do they want to do it, right? We have a very open door policy. There's a lot of names out there that if they want to work with Legends of Lucha Libre and they want to kind of work under the representation that we provide, then there, there's certainly a, an open door. And so I think some of the names that we're seeing we're actually in talks with. Some of the names, uh, you know, are just off limits because of agreements or, or contracts elsewhere. And uh, we, we've got at least another half dozen to dozen names that we've either, we're either in the midst of negotiating with or we've negotiated with and we're now working towards coming out with a product plan for. Um, so there's always new names coming and we're, we're really excited about uh, some of the names that will be announced, I guess, probably maybe later this year. Um, and that's kind of how we look at it. Awesome. And Eric, I know you've been going back and forth with a lot of the talent as you're designing their likeness into a figure. You know, what's that process like for you? Well, I mean, it, that sort of thing funnels through Kevin. So far, I mean, the talent has been amazing. You know, I've, I've worked with talent approval before uh, back at Hasbro, whether it was on Marvel movie stuff or Star Wars or whatever. Um, Kevin has been amazing at uh, wrangling all of that and getting it all done. But I mean, so far, I mean, all the talent's been great. I love hearing uh, their reactions to certain things, especially when it's like super positive and super excited. Our goal is always to represent them as you know what's what's going to help them the most and help you know will help all of us the most and so it's 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 really great to to hear that they're happy with what we're doing and, and what our plans are i know a lot of people are waiting for kind of some news some updates do you have some materials you want to share eric yeah i think we can we, did, we don't really have any reveals so much tonight because you know because things have gotten slowed down a little bit at the factory. Our factories are not 100% staffed yet since the, the outbreak. So um, things have slowed down. And because of that, of course, production has slowed down. Um, we didn't want to barrel ahead and show too much stuff early on that's still quite a ways off. Instead, what we kind of opted to do 
was to show off some uh, where some of our product that we've already talked about is in the process. So uh, we're going to kick off uh, talking about Fanatico's Wave 1 and uh, uh, what's what will be popping up on your screen here is it's uh, Pentazero M. Um, this is the digital sculpt with the digital colors and tattoos and everything added to it. Uh, this figure is uh, about to head out to tooling in, in Hong Kong right now, or in China right now. And um, we use these sheets, they use these sheets to kind of zero in on the tooling, uh, on the colors and the deco and all of that. Penta's tattoos are numerous. <laughs> so uh, we have an amazing artist uh, named Daniel Friedman who comes in, who we hire out to do our tattoo artwork. And um, he also does like the faces and the t-shirts and all that stuff for us. So this is, this is the uh, digital sculpt for the Fanatico's uh, Wave 1 Penta. Ah, and there is uh, Taya Valkyrie in all her glory with uh, uh, her orange costume actually happens to be probably, it's one of my favorites of her costumes. So I pushed for this one to be her, her first deco right away. And you, you can see she's got her tattoos and stuff as well. Again, it's the same as uh, Penta with it. It's digital. It's all digital right now still. Her likeness is fantastic. And uh, Fred Axon, who's our, our, our partner and 3D art director, he really, really worked hard to get her likeness down. He, he kind of got a little obsessed with it because he really, really wanted it to look like her. Penta Zero M's brother, Ray Phoenix. Uh, here they have matching Lucha Brothers t-shirts in this set. Um, Ray also has his uh, arm bracers um, that he doesn't always wear, but uh, we thought it was a, a nice deco break for this one. And I just want to interject real quick here. Uh, this t-shirt actually uh, is a real t-shirt of theirs that uh, Juan Ortiz designed and you can get in their Pro Wrestling Tees store. So actual yeah. Lucha Brothers t-shirt that exists in the real world. And of course the legend Juventud Guerrera here in his early costumes when he was still wearing his father's colors and his uh, a variation of his father's mask. Um, although with Hoovy, he's got all that glorious hair. So he has it uh, out of the mask. <laughs> And you can see here he'll be he'll be quite a bit shorter than a uh, Penta and Phoenix, and then um, this line is our uh, mini mascaras line, and you can see they're they're roughly about three inches tall, and it's a black bust with uh, the Legends of Lucha Libre logo and uh, the the characters and the the talent's name, and then it's a soft vinyl PVC mask replica of their their actual mask that then can go on the the bust so you can have a collection of tons of masks like like you can see there behind kevin on his top shelf except he has real masks but the these can be tiny ones on a smaller shelf and you can just have tons and tons of them this is the uh primary teniblest uh deco scheme this is of course super astro and this is again the primary uh, deco scheme and and all of these uh, mini mascaras will have a a chase variant deco. So when I say primary, that this is the pr this is the primary deco, and then the other deco will be a ch chase and and a little bit harder to get because it it'll be uh, fewer in number. This is the chase variant for uh, Super Astro in the white, silver, and black. This is the chase variant for um, Teniblis Junior in the black and gold. This is the primary Solar in his uh, very classic golden red. This is actually the, the Chase is coming up first on this one. The Chase Ray Phoenix is the gold, black, and red. This is the Chase variant for Solar in the black and gold. This is the primary Phoenix, Ray Phoenix with the, uh, in the black and, and red. I love on this, the sculpt on this one, on the Ray Phoenix, it has the uh, Phoenix that he has like stitched onto the mask, like actually sculpted in at this scale, we could actually do all the the nice detailed sculpt with all the stitching and everything like that. This is the primary Penta Zero M in the, the in his iconic black and white. This is the Chase Penta Zero M in uh, my favorite color scheme of his, which is I I love when he's in the black and red. And this is the Chase of the Conan mask um, in the yellow with the uh, tiger fur, and then the primary. 
Conan is the black with the yellow and then the two different color furs. I'm really, again, I'm really happy that we're doing Conan's mask because it's such a great mask and, and most of us were introduced to him after he had already lost it in Mexico. So it's, uh, I, I love having him part of the line. Yeah, and just even, I mean, I think for anyone that's heard us talk about this before, uh, this isn't new, but I'm so excited to be doing these mini masks because when Eric pitched it to me, I was like, I don't only under, I don't not understand how no one's done this before. I don't understand how I never thought of this before. Like, <laughs> it's so freaking brilliant. Um, every, I mean, that's the, the, for a hardcore Lucha fan who's out there and collecting toys and, and, and wanting collectibles, um, I mean, we want it, like I said, we, we collect, we want to collect the, the full masks. Um, it's an expensive uh, hobby uh, and have it. And um, I just love the idea that, you know, even for me, you know, uh, that I'll be able to have this, this shelf uh, that has all these mini masks. And, and, you know, I think the, the, the thought that they'll, you know, they'll be blind boxes um, yeah. adds a fun level to the collectability and the chase. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to these coming out. Yeah, I think I think there'll be a lot of fun for people to collect, and and I've in the past year or so, I've I've recently gotten into collecting luchador masks as well, and it is a pricey hobby. I only have five or six, and um, it was th this idea came about um, because of their price point, and I was actually like looking at reference of Solar, and he's got this amazing photo of him in his house with just all of his masks behind him. And I was like, oh my God, that would be an amazing thing to be able to have. And I, it just was, it, 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 when I pitched it to Kevin, he, he got excited, then I got excited. And it's just been such a, a fun, fun line to work on. I'm seeing lots of hearts and likes and people are loving this line. So Kevin, you know, you're really in the heart of this community. What has been the reaction from the luchador community on these figures and the little masks and, and all the things that we've talked about here? Yeah, well, so we were able to kind of give the first sneak preview really to the actual Lucha fan base at Expo Lucha last year. Um, for those that don't know, Expo Lucha is the Lucha Libre convention that Master Public started uh, a couple years ago. And it is our version of a comic con that is, you know, basically dedicated to Lucha Libre. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, we had to postpone this year's edition to uh, June of next year. But um, uh, it's it's a great opportunity for us to be able to give attendees the first look. Um, and in this past August, we were able to do that. And not just the attendees, but there's great footage uh, out there, I think on YouTube even, uh, of, of, fin of Phoenix, Ray Phoenix, walking up and the reveal of the figure the first time he ever saw it and his jaw dropped and his reaction. Um, the, 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 the reaction has been really great. I think that, you know, it's, it is a niche market, a niche community. And as much as we are hoping that there's a lot of... Um, you know, uh, multi-generational households that are going to want to grab and share classic luchadors and, and modern luchadors with um, with their families. There, there's a fan base that has been sorely underserved up till now, and there has not been these collectibles for them. And so, you know, I'll be honest. I think that even if these figures weren't nearly as good looking as they were, we'd still be getting a great reaction. But the fact that, look, I've gone on record, and I will continue to go on record saying. I have zero doubt that these are going to be the best Lucha Libre figures that have ever been released. Um, just from the articulation, which I actually, I'd like Eric to go into for people that aren't familiar with, um, about the, uh, the articulation of these, the, the look, the deco, the way that the masks um, are being put together. Uh, a lot of figures out there, the, the, the faces, the heads are one single piece. And so you don't get the actual kind of depth and detail that you get from the process that boss fights using. And again, Eric, much better at going into this than I am because this is not my world. But um, yeah, the reaction has been great. I mean, look, bottom line for any of this is that Ruben Zamora, my, my business partner, uh, and I, and, and Ruben's the one that founded Mass Republic, you know, we're fans of Lucha Libre. That's why we do this. That's why the company has become what it is. And yeah, you know, I'm not going to say that there's never a product that gets released that we're like, ah, we wouldn't necessarily, you know, buy that or, or you know, wear that ourselves or whatever. You know, there's a lot of different diverse tastes. Um, but 
uh, you know, these action figures are, are, and the collectibles are things that I would absolutely buy as a fan, 100% hands mm -hmm. down. And so to me, that, you know, I'm always our, my own first kind of like taste test in all of this, you know, what would I buy it? And then, you know, sharing, um, you know, with, with kind of inside uh, people that are associated with the company or, or fans that we know uh, are super passionate and then being able to take it out to the world. Yeah, I mean, the reaction has been nothing but um, top notch. Um, if we have time, Eric, I'd love to have you kind of go back into um, what makes the articulation of these figures uh, special, as well as that whole kind of process of how these masks on the figures are being made it's a little bit different than what you see on other figures. Yeah, I, um, I actually have the prototypes here. Uh, these are hand, these are still our hand painted uh, prototypes and they, you know, so they've become very fragile. They've been toting around this Phoenix for almost a year now and uh, he's, he's pretty beat up. But, um, you know, you can see, you know, the layers of articulation and, and where, where, where we're pushing. We, um, at Boss Fight, we're, we're kind of known for hyper detail our our, hy our hyper detail and our you know a lot of articulation so of course and that's at a four inch scale so of course when you go to six inch we had to kind of step our game up even more so than we normally do so we um we looked at a lot of existing six inch figures that were out there on the market already and and uh, our figures are at least our premium line is more inspired by a lot of what's out there like in Japan and what's going on there with their action figures where we've got, we built everything in layers. There's, you know, they have the butterfly joints so they can put their hands together in front of them. They can, uh, or you can bend them back into like a submission pose. Our, our goal, our goal kind of became the sharpshooter because in the sharpshooter, each participant is hyper extended in a different direction. So it was kind of this one thing, and it's something that you can't get a lot of figures into unless you have very specific bits of, of uh, articulation in there. And, you know, like being able to bend backwards and crouch forward and um, being able to like twist the legs into like that, that kind of full, that kind of knot that, that you, they, they get them into. So it, that kind of had become our, our kind of goal to kind of push for. And um and that's what the premium line, the, the, the Fanatico's line is a lot more basic. It's got a lot less articulation, but the same size and detail as, as our premium line. So they'll look great on a shelf together, but if you're posing them in a, in a, in a move or, or a hold, you probably want to use the, the premium figures. Now, what Kevin was saying about the way we layer um, the masks, this is the Ray Phoenix. And you can see that there's like that depth between the mask and his face. And the way we got that is because we were sculpting the mask, like parts of the mask are a separate piece. Of course, their face is not really under there. It's just this kind of like negative gaps in spaces. And, and to be clear, the actual figures, you won't be able to remove them. No, that, so. you, yeah, it, all, like the only parts of Phoenix that are sculpted are what you can see with his mask on. And actually, this piece will actually be glued on in, in, in production. But we, we wanted to do this because we wanted that depth. We wanted that, that little bit of shadow and hangover from the mask to the nose. You know, and, and it's the same for, you know, Penta's the same way. We, we layered it. So is uh, Conan. Um, somebody like Teniablis is a little easier because he's completely covered. So <laughs> we, we don't have to quite do that. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the... The, the goal was to get that depth and that look that somebody, somebody actually has when they have these masks on. I do want to take a second and answer a couple of the questions that had come up in the room. Um, so first off, for everyone that's suggesting Blue Demon Jr., uh, uh, Blue Demon Jr. is now a trademark that is, at the moment, controlled by Disney. So uh, there will be no uh, Blue Demon Jr. figures uh, anytime in the foreseeable future. Uh, for those that aren't aware, he does have a pilot that is being done uh, at Disney for Disney Channel or for Disney Plus. Um, it uh, it got delayed because of COVID, but uh, it should probably be moving forward shortly. And so, for the time being, uh, Blue Demon's action figure rights are all held by Disney. So no uh, no Blue Demon Junior figures from anybody else. Um, in terms of the question about Lucha Brothers and AEW, 
So again, this is kind of what makes uh, Legends of Lucha Libre different. Uh, it's never really existed in professional wrestling before, but our structure is much more like the NFL's NFL Players Association or really any real sport um, player association where the talent gets represented outside or separate from whatever league they may be in. And so we have a long-term contract with the Lucha Brothers to represent them for Legends of Lucha Libre. And so we have uh, the same rights that AEW has. AEW has the same rights that we have. So whatever AEW does and develops, the toys, um, you know, if they do a video game down the road or, you know, there's t-shirts and merchandise available through AEW, um, AEW has all the rights to do that. By the same token, uh, we also have the rights and we continue to develop um, merchandise whether it's toys or pins or you know t-shirts or whatever uh, for the Lucha Brothers and so really for the Lucha Brothers uh, and for the fans when talent is part of Legends of Lucha Libre it's uh, it's a best of both worlds situation for everybody. And you, we've had a lot of allusions to COVID here and I'm seeing lots and lots of questions come in about timing of the figures. So Eric, you want to talk a little bit about where the figures are in, in expected timing? So our, our original launch window was going to be August. So I mean, we're not even at August yet. But um, it is right around the corner. And unfortunately, due to I mean, our factory was closed for a number of months uh, back in, in January, February, and that that really hurt the production schedule for everybody for, you know, but uh, us as well. And our current, we, we are still working to get it done, to get the 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 first two premium figures and the accessory sets done as as quickly as we can, but also staying within our expected level of quality, which is admittedly high, <laughs> and we're, we're hard on our factory. Um, but uh, that that all said, so we are kind of looking at. Uh, late fall is what we're we're saying right now, and and you know we we hope for better, but we can't guarantee that. So they are on track. I, in fact, I just got some photos and videos uh, over the last couple of days from China of the uh, first test shots taken out of the tool, uh, out of the molds, and they are looking fantastic. Um, there's still some 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 finessing and and some dialing in that we have to do for some fine tuning that we have to do with the uh the steel tools which is normal in in toy production on top of that they have sent us a number of samples so in the next couple of weeks we are hoping to put out some photo shoots and some videos showing them and where they're at because they are looking amazing trust us Nobody wants these out more than we do. No. Uh, you know, uh, this, the, I mean, again, especially for me, from a, from a business perspective, from a fan perspective, I mean, this, this was kind of the, the, I don't know, the deal that we wanted from day one. We've done a lot of other deals for a lot of other merchandise products, um, and it's not to belittle any of those. I'm very proud to have, you know, a calendar and, and you know, some <laughs> wrestling kit uh, and a bunch of other things that are coming up. But um, man, the, the toys and the collectibles for me, for a number of reasons are really kind of the, the, the big, uh, you know, kind of where we wanted to be and what we want to be doing in that space we want to be in. And so, you know, as other people's toy lines started to get delayed, as Mattel got delayed, as this got delayed, as that got delayed, you know, Eric and I kept talking and, and he was, in, you know, he's in constant contact with the factory in, in China. Um, and it just finally, you know, I guess this, this last week or, you know, uh, very shortly, it just kind of got, kind of got to the point where it was like, it does not look like it's happening in August, so let's let's announce that it's getting pushed back. Um, and again, let's let's announce uh, where we think the far end of it is, because hopefully it'll be yeah. sooner. But um, you know, uh, definitely still expecting the premium figures and accessories this year. Uh, it's just a matter of what month it's going to be. And then we did have another question, um, Eric, about the timing of the uh, Luchasitos and the mini masks. So I don't know if there's an update on that. Currently, the mini masks and the wave one of the Fanatico series, which is what we showed earlier, they're on a on a more similar schedule to one another than with the Luchasitos. And the um, the the mini masks and the and, and the Fanatico series, we are in the process currently of three D printing the prototypes, and 
we have to do some some fine tuning of the articulation on those as well at this point, which we, we do digitally. And then we'll basically send those files probably within the next 30 days to China to start tooling. So those will actually go into tooling uh, before the premium stuff is even done, which is which is very cool because now then once that overlap begins, it kind of starts to snowball and, and continue. Um, and that's always the goal is you, you want to have something as one item is getting getting uh, getting put on the boat to come to to the states, the other product should be starting at least you know and and you you kind of have these like Chinese checkers where you're jumping you know, the, the marbles, and you want things to be plugging into those holes. Um, as for the Luchasitos, we are in the midst, they got pushed back a little bit on our own schedule, but they are now, they've now been pumped back up as a priority, and we are working on getting the sculpts done for wave one a, as quickly as we can, because we, we want to get those out as well. So are we looking at, uh, like, early 2021, then, we think, for, for, for Natico's wave one and for the masks? Yeah, that that would be the hope. It would be first it would be first quarter of 2021. Um, hopefully, the the fanaticos and the masks go a little bit faster than the premium figures. The premium premium figures are they are more complex, more complex engineering, way more pieces. Um, as and as such, uh, they take a little longer, um, especially in the early stages of the the fine tuning and the messing with all, making sure all the pieces snap together correctly and all of that. Whereas the other things, they're a little faster because they, they, they don't have as many steps. So uh, yeah, I would say hopefully the first quarter of uh, 2021. And we have a question here. Are the to torsos of the premium figures um, going to be made of a softer plastic? Will that help the articulation? How are you kind of planning to get those to that state that you talked about that could be really bendable? So I'm gonna show you the, uh, the inside of his chest. Um, here and so I don't know if you'll be able to really see it completely, but it's actually there's an internal structure, and then his chest is actually a softer PVC piece over it. So like the the neck ball and the the ball snap on the on the the shoulders, and the then the um the abdomen actually all pop into that, that internal structure. And that's all, um, I can't take them apart any further than this. Um, but the, uh, so ba basically that means we can, um, that, that that softer piece the ch of, that's the outside of his chest will have a little bit of flex to it and movement that, that will give him a lot more, a lot more function um, you'll also notice that we we put the shoulder the shoulder pins are actually on ball snaps instead of straight pegs, and this actually gives will give them like their shoulders can, will be they'll basically be able to shrug, <laughs> and which is is kind of kind of a fun uh, it, you know it makes it so their arms can go all the way up can go all the way down back forward all of that. Awesome, and we're getting lots of questions about where can people find these toys. Um, where can they purchase the toys? So do you want to give a little overview about how we run our sales? Yeah, we, well, um, the, the first two figures and the accessory sets can, are all on pre-sale right now at bossfightshop.com. Also, I believe um, Big Bad Toy Store has them on pre-sale, as does Megalopolis. Our stuff will eventually be on Ringside Collectibles as well. And we are looking to, you know, we're always looking to expand. Um, we do ship worldwide, so that's not an issue. Although be aware that currently worldwide is a little pricey on shipping, <laughs> but hopefully that will go back down eventually. And we, we are working with some distributors in Mexico to get these uh, mass released in Mexico as well. We also have a really great network of um, smaller retail stores that order from us um, throughout the U.S. We've got lots of representation throughout Europe as well. Um, so you may even find them in your local comic shop or, or action figure store as well. And, you know, if you have a local comic shop or toy store, 
tell them about us because we will open accounts with anybody and sell. So <laughs> please, please tell them about us. Has COVID affected the wrestling industry itself? Um, so Kevin, how is that changing the matches and, and oh. how it moves forward? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's changed everything. I mean, Lucha Libre on the main um, major promotion level has been completely shut down for months now in Mexico. Um, you do have uh, smaller companies that are starting to do those kind of empty arena type matches. Uh, one company even did like a, a show out on a ranch in the middle of, of kind of nowhere. Um, and in the United States, obviously, uh, you, WWE, AEW, has been doing uh, empty arena shows. It's really, it's shut down uh, independent Lucha Libre, um, you know, from the promotions that run on Sundays in, you know, any town USA and draw 100 people to the pro wrestling revolutions of the, of the world that draw, you know, 1,000 people. All those shows have been shut down. Um, so it's been, it's been a very, very difficult uh, time for a lot of uh, Lucha companies, a lot of the, the talent um, for, you know, pro wrestling and Lucha Libre overall. Um, but, uh, the great part, uh, in terms of, from the fan perspective, I guess, is as Eric mentioned, there is so much content out there, um, whether it's YouTube or Twitch, or, I mean, even just over on, on luchacentral.com, uh, our website that, uh, we have every day, we're putting up a match of the day, a historic match. We put it, we put up, um, history of the day with match links. We also feature uh, a number of, uh, when, it, when there are live streams and events, we'll, we'll promote them on there and often share video there. Uh, if you never watched Lucha Underground or you want to relive Lucha Underground, uh, we have a podcast on the Lucha Central Podcast Network called uh, Masks, Mats, and Mayhem. And they're going back through the entire Lucha Underground series, which is available to watch for free in the United States on Tubi.tv. So every week you can watch uh, an old Lucha Underground episode and then listen to the podcast and, and as they, as they talk about it and analyze now kind of with some hindsight, looking back at uh, what we know now and uh, kind of where things develop. So uh, as much as brand new content is at a minimum um, though, I encourage you to watch Lucha Brothers on AEW every week. Um, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of content out there if you're uh, looking for, for Lucha content and luchacentral.com is a great place to, to find out about it every day. Yeah, I've, I've actually been watching, re-watching uh, uh, Lucha Underground on TV, and it is still amazing to watch. I, I love that. That was such a, a fun uh, run. All right, and we had a great question come in. Is there any way for the fans to help promote the figures? Um, you know, they're starting to share on social media, but how can they help? You know, sh I mean sharing uh, share our posts tell people about it uh link link to our link directly to our store a lot of the fans who have pre-ordered um when they eventually come in they'll be the first ones to be getting it because they're they will yeah. have pre-ordered and i think again i especially with the what i would call the ultimate articulation um, and the quality of the figures, I, I have no doubt that you guys are all going to absolutely love the figures. And so when you get them, I think sharing the figures themselves and, and telling people your honest opinions of, of the figures. And um, again, I'm confident with how great they are. Uh, <laughs> I think that'll, that'll really, really make a difference uh, in terms of, of getting the word out there. Because it's one thing to say, oh, there's another action figure coming out in the sometimes crowded pro wrestling action figure space. Um, but I think the, the hearing about the quality of, of the product when it, when it reaches your hands is going to be really important uh, in terms of helping out and letting other people discover, especially these first Penton Phoenix figures and the accessories too, because I know we haven't really talked much about the accessories, but even if you've collected wrestling accessories, uh, you've got new and different accessories. Yep. You know, the table breaks in a different way than any other table, I think, uh, has broken before in, in uh, wrestling accessories. Um, there's the, the, the sickle uh, that was inspired by uh, uh, Mr. Pogo in Japan. There's a barbed wire that you can actually wrap around things. Yeah, um, the, the soft, the soft bar barbed wire that you can wrap around items and then it's like shaped like a hook and a loop so you can actually like kind of lock it. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and again, too, I think, you know, because those accessories are essentially universal, 
you know, for those that are figure photographers or for those that, you know, like setting up their, their kind of dioramas and whatnot, um, I think sharing those accessories being used with other figures as well is going to be really cool to see. And I do think that as soon as those uh, Penton Phoenix figures come out and the accessories come out, you know, we're going to see people setting up their dream matches and photographing their dream matches. And like, I, I'm really excited about seeing the creativity that's going to come out of the fan base. Um, somebody asked about a ring um, a, a while back, actually, uh, but I wanted to kind of address that. We are we are actually working on a ring prototype right now, and we'll see, we'll see where that goes. We don't exactly know, you know, we don't have all the details, costing and all that stuff just yet, but we are working on it. And ours, our current plan is to our ring will be a little bit different than what's out there for both collectors and kids, and it's. You know, it won't it won't be real scale because real scale is enormous, um, and we're not there yet. And uh, but yeah, we we are working on a ring. There was there's another good question. I I think um, I want to have you address. Uh, Dave McDonald uh, says, any chance of six inch blanks? We ask that because uh, the weapons packs come with the additional heads, and I don't think we've talked about um, why they have heads if there's not blanks. This is the head here. I've got, I've actually been fiddling with it while we talked. Uh, you can also see the mask that uh, this is based on behind Kevin there on over his shoulder. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, this, this is the Master Republic logo um, head it, and it, it's in the Master Republic logo. And we, the, the reason we put it in the, the accessory sets is one, it was a really cool design and, and, a, and a nice mask. But we, we also kind of, we're all customizers of Boss Fight. Like I paint figures for myself. I, you know, hobble them together and I mix and match parts and I do all this stuff. I do all sorts of stuff. And um, we know that there's a customizing community within Lucha and wrestling in general as well as you know what we normally do um so we we wanted to test the waters and kind of see see where that goes we put the head in and and we are hoping to find a way to put out whether it's blanks or accessory sets that are specific like like an accessory set that's like specifically meant for customizing like maybe it's unpainted and there's extra parts and all this stuff. We're not exactly sure where we're going to go, but we are exploring the possibility of doing some sort of um, customizer series uh, of, of Lucha parts. And also, and I could be remembering correctly, but can you swap those onto any of the existing figures? Yes, those masks are made to swap onto, um, like here's, here's the, the, the Penta prototype. Um, and it, it's the same ball and socket system as so you you know you you can put them on our on our base on our premium figures or on our um, Fanatico figures and repaint the body and create your own wrestler with it. Um, and we're we're hoping to kind of expand on that as as well because it would be you know it is it, it is a fun thing but um, customizing is fun but an expensive hobby. So if you could create product that makes that hobby a little less necessary to buy 10 $25 figures and only buy one, like it, it, it kind of brings it, brings it a little home, uh, brings it home for the uh, consumer, which is nice. Thank you. Um, and I'm glad to see everybody super excited and all these comments and likes and, and things as we talk about this. I do want to be conscious of our time. Um, we are running out of our time here, but I want to thank Kevin and Eric for joining us and sharing all of this great wisdom and insight. I want to thank all of our fans for joining us. Um, it's been really fun to see all your questions and excitement as we go. Um, and I hope that you will join us for an upcoming Boss Fight Live. We're doing these a couple times a month, so we'll announce the next one very shortly. And thank you everybody for attending. Um, and Kevin and Eric, once again, thank you guys so, so much for doing this. Thank you. And yes, thanks to all the fans. Um, this is fun. And I look forward to hopefully being back within the next uh, you know, number of months and, and actually revealing that the figures are here. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us. This has been great. And, and 
you thank you for asking questions. Thank you for being there. Um, and thank you, Kevin, for joining us. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you.